Hello, my name is Pony7, and welcome back to Rise of Flight, and welcome back to Pat Wilson's for the new career. As you can quickly probably tell by all the names, we are flying for the Russians. Out of... Mosteroyskia? Mosteroy... Mosteroyskia? Something Russian? Starts with an M. And ends with a, a shka. I don't know. I don't speak Russian. I don't know why I decided to do this. It's mistakes were made, but we're gonna keep going through this because I'm guessing people will find amusing my attempting pronunciations. We are sub parporishka. Purpurish Alexei Alexei Pol Polvov. As is the random generating name I came up with, with for the Russian. A flying Dissorsky S 16, which is one of the only two Russian aircraft in Rise of Flight. So, I mean, the other one is the Alusha Monument. Unless it's not actually called the Alusha Monument, but it's Alusha something else. I don't know. I think the mod, I think the little thing's called Elusha Monument, but I don't know if it's the actual plane is called Elusha Monument or if it's just Elusha and then something else. Anyway, we're gonna go generate a mission because you know we do have to go somewhere. Control airspace near factory. Engage any air, engage any enemy aircraft that you encounter. All right, one meter a second, so that's very fast. We're part of the fourth AOI. Uh, squadron out of here, that place. Briefing map, climbing, climbing, climbing. And then patrolling along the front lines. And oh, look at that, they're all in Russian. Oh, how much fun we're going to have with this career if it lasts longer than a single episode. Uh, so that's Galishkia. Prishna Travia. I'm gonna have to see if I can't find somebody to, you know, voice the voice the names for me, and just edit that in subtly, back backdoorly. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be very subtle considering I'd literally be just editing in the voice, but. If I could, either way, until until either that or I learn Russian, enjoy the pronunciation. Zavolov, I think. They're so going up, ingressing here, then going past Kraskovy, and then by Vizukia, and then along there by Gilishun, and. Polish Noi and Volushnia up there, and then the massive word over here, and Podgai Podgaisti. Uh. <laughs> Let's just move on to the pilots. There might be some easier names in there. So flying is actually, I think, the squadron commander, Captain Bogdash. Bogdasha, yes, Navai, and then I'm guessing PK. I'm guessing that's lieutenant in Russian, like the abbreviation of lieutenant for Russian. Pavlo Galigin, and then Roman Pashkin. Sure. So I will break things off here, and I, I will see you in Rise of Flight, where. I can stop trying to pronounce all these Russian names for the moment. I'll see you there. Alright, welcome back. We're now in Rise of Flight with all the Russian names. Zavalov. That one's easy. That one not so much. Alright, hangar. And here's our bird. 
the Sorsky uh, S16. I don't even know uh, how this thing flies or whether or not it, that's a uh, a uh, throttable engine or if it's just yeah you're going now. I have no idea. Uh, there's no modifications. Literally, it's just a single Lewis machine gun. The we have the advantage over because this is the early. I set this to the earliest possible date, so we're going to be facing Eindeckers and stuff like that. So we should have an advantage over them in terms of roll rate and stuff like that because we don't have to bend our whole wing. We have ailerons because we are smart. But we do automatically, we're on equal par with Eindeckers. I'm just going to look through the skins while I'm talking. We are on equal par with the Eindeckers in terms of firepower. Right off the bat. Because... The British Sorsky. No. Uh, oh, there's not a whole lot. Uh, sure, we'll go with this one. I like this. A little bit of Russian on there, even though I have no idea what it says. But as I was saying, we're on par with the Eindeckers for firepower right away. Because we have a single Lewis machine gun with 500 rounds. They have a single sp Spando with Spandau with 500 rounds. So immediately, we're on equal par. Now, the DH2... Not yeah, I think it's the ADH2. Anyway, the British early war fighter also only has a single machine. The thing with that is, it's a drum-fed Lewis instead of a belt-fed Lewis, which means whenever you had, whenever you run out of ammunition, there's a period of time where even if you have a perfect sight picture, you can't. Like if you still have ammunition, but the drums have to take the drum out, and no one gets loaded in. There's always a period of time where it's like, oh, well, I can't actually attack them despite having a pretty much perfect sight picture because, oh, I have to change out the drum. So, we're actually better armed than the early British ones, British fighters, because we have a belt fed instead of a uh, drum fed Lewis, and which puts us on par with the Eindeckers. Also, we have a steering wheel for a... Uh, uh, flying column again, so that's quite interesting. But, oh, I've got to you know, click P. Actually set that right. Oh, and... Oh, what is this? I'm going to guess that this is an altimeter. That's my guess. It's an altimeter. Yeah, and there's actually the drum for the... That won't get in the way at all. Never. That would never get in the way. Oh, this one's actually controllable. He says as he starts to roll away. Uh, cancel the controllable part. Well, I mean, I can't control it, I just have to adjust the throttle. Yeah, I'm guessing that's altitude. I like how quick that wheel turns, though. It turns very quickly. Alright, so things to note right off the bat. She likes to lean left. And maybe because we're going at a slow speed, but that's probably the torque from the engine. Yeah, my guess is that that is an altitude dial. Or, also known as an altimeter. But, as is normal tradition, as I, uh, again, probably go a little bit too slow, I will break things off here, and I will bring you back once, uh, well, when uh, we encounter the enemy. So, I will see you then. Alright, well, we're just going to go take a look over here, and see what these guys are, because... The Sorskis, at least our squad in our flight, they don't actually show up as aircraft symbols when you get too far away. They show up as ground symbols. 
So I don't know if these are Sorskis or if they're Aleutians or something like that. Those look like Rollins. At least to me. That's what those look like. That looks like a flight of Rollins. Yep, Rollins. I don't know why our flight is not attacking. Maybe they just didn't uh, get the right look at them. The things that I've noticed about the Sorsky so far, it's, it wants to pitch up quite aggressively. Oh, so that is a speedometer. Not a airspeed indicator or anything like that. That is actually a speedometer. And when flying slow, the Sorsky likes to try and go left. And I'm pretty sure that's because the engine, I'm pretty sure, spins to the left. Actually, no. That might be an RPM gauge. Well, it's something. Let's close in on this rolling up ahead here. He is presenting a very nice target. I was wondering why the speedometer had, you know, a setting for 2,000. That's because it's not a speedometer. <laughs> I think I got some. Yep, got shots in there. His left wing is very damaged. Let's use the blip switch. Don't want to over rev the engine. Come on. Bring the nose up. There he goes there. Oh, and there goes Shrek. I don't know why he does that. Don't understand. Oh, there goes his tail gunner. Oh, and there goes the wing. Although... Oh, and there goes the rest of the wing. Hold on, just trim it out. Oh, no. Can't trim that out. <laughs> Unless, can we? Except we don't have a... You know, an actual... I'm just going to fire. I know it won't do anything, but... Unless... Maybe... Well, that might have worked, maybe, if we had enough altitude. Oh, we... We're actually still alive. I was not expecting that to land like that, and I was not expecting that to actually be a survivable crash. I was expecting the whole thing just to blow up spectacularly, but nope, we, we actually survived. Kind of. So, I'll see you over in Pat Wilson's for the, uh, for the debriefing. Alright, welcome back to Pat Wilson's. Uh, let's do our combat report. Claims, we did not shoot anything down, none that we saw, so we won't submit any claims, although we might be giving some, claim, some kills. Submit report. And start the debrief. Went flew off, took off, went flew there, there. Uh, was damaged, 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 damaged. We crashed, we were lightly wounded. Alright then. So things I've noted about the Sorsky. Flying slow, it likes to really try to roll left. Really, really likes to try and roll left. Uh, nobody shot anything down while we were there. Next page. Injured in combat, unavailable. And we were given the wound stripe. Very well. It likes to roll left. And it also 
is a uh, pusher, well, a puller in this case, but it's uh, the engine that you that you can't you can't actually adjust the engine RPMs. You can only lip the engine to slow down the RPMs. What I thought was actually a speedometer, and why I was like, why does that have two thousand as markings on it? Is actually just a uh, RPM gauge. Although I guess it could be used to gauge speed, kinda, but not as accurately as actually having an RPM a uh, speedometer. So Sorsky is an interesting aircraft. I that I was well, interesting to fly, at least from what I've seen. However, it does seem to be very fragile in terms of actually taking damage. But I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.